I just haven't, you know, I have to hit it at the right time. I've done a lot of things where I thought I'd become big after I did them, and it didn't work out quite the way I expected. Um, I did The Last Boy Scout, where I had a great role in that, and had a really big role. You know, with uh, The Last Boy Scout, was with Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans. I played Bruce Willis's daughter. And um, everybody was like, oh, my God, you're going to be huge. And Tony Scott was the director, and, and, and Joe Silver. And they were like, you're going to be so big after this, Danielle. You just watch, just wait, you'll see. Nothing happened. I waited and I watched and I didn't see anything happen. Hi, <laughs> I'm Ben. Danielle. I'm the boy me too. Sure. Sure. One on is up and Danielle, to you go. They said to read. I specifically called them roses. You're done. So call you back. Reese, why do they think I'm dating a dead guy? The character I'm playing is not really anything like me. Her way with guys is to be real forceful and that's the way she gets her way. I mean, I always speak my mind to get my way, but I'm not forceful. Put Tony on. Tony, Rich ain't roses. Do I got to come down there and straighten you out? Well, I play these characters better. I always get casted for bad girls. The good girls, it's just too boring. That's what it is. Okay, continuing from the whack on the rear end, please, Danielle. Go back to the bottom. And... Action, Danielle. Oh. Hey. Yo. Okay. <laughs> it's fun because I am older than him in real life, so it's fun to take charge. I'm more comfortable doing the stuff with him than I would be doing it with a guy my own age. It's, it's easier for me because I can actually take charge because I am older than him. And then walk away. Okay. Don't anticipate. Right. 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 You really have to be a strong person to be an actor and actress. You, you get to oh, you're not right for this. You didn't. You weren't right for that. You didn't do a good job. You weren't pretty enough. You, you know, you didn't. You weren't tall enough. So, so you like my artwork, Fuzzy? having a matching one tattooed right over my heart, see? Oh, no, no, no. I bet everything from you weren't pretty enough to your chest wasn't big enough. Stuff like that. That you gotta go, come on, are you kidding me? Like, that really makes a difference. Yeah, just show me what you're doing. By the numbers, would you from the kiss? You don't need to actually do the kiss. I just want to look at this. Okay. My sister loves the fact that I'm an actress or, like, a celebrity. I made her promise me when she went into fifth grade that she wouldn't tell any of her friends that I was an actress because she seems to get more friends that way. You know, like, oh, oh, all of a sudden she comes home from her third day of school and she's got ten more friends because she said, my sister's in this and my sister's in that. I had to go to her, I had to go to her class last year and show them my demo reel and talk about the business with them for an hour. Okay, all set. This is shot 195 on three and action. Make a dream come true. If I couldn't act anymore, I probably would start seeing my psychologist more than once a week. The snow caps are going to cha-cha. I think they're saving the last dance for you, Frankie. Out of my way. I went through like a, I guess you might call it a little nervous breakdown part of my life. I had worked um, on Roseanne for a season and did a bunch of stuff, and, and then after Roseanne, I, I couldn't get a job. She just wasn't quite right for the particular roles uh, during that audition process. Uh, this role came up uh, in a show called Sister Teresa, where she plays the sister of uh, a character on a show named Harley Kiner. And, uh, she was terrific. Danielle, keep your energy. You've got to get her out of the car so you can get Corey yourself. That's what you need. You need to come forward with the money. Money is candy. Candy, you'll lose the guy, okay? I think sitcoms kind of ruin you. Like, I can honestly say that I'm not a comedic actress. I mean, I've tried, I've been there, I've done sitcoms, and it just doesn't work. I watch myself and go, why did they even hire me? I, I'm really bad. <laughs> you know, look at me. I can't, I can't do comedy. I can't make anybody laugh. I sat there for hours like an idiot with my stupid souvenir hat to one of the ballpark guys called my mom. I can make people cry, you know, I can make people be scared and, and make people go, God, that girl's mean, or look at her. Why is she doing that? You know, I really hate that girl. Which I'd rather have that than go, why, you know, she's not funny. This is the end of the first section. Now, Robbie, go sit in the car. Danielle, when you come forward, you want to keep clear to this lens. So go back. Go from ooh-ooh to dance and snacks. Ooh-ooh. 
Dave some snacks. I love the Dave some snacks. I'm saving the last dance for you, Frankie. Out of my way. There's not really an upside or a downside to being an actress in the business. I think that there's a lot of fake things, like my friends think, well, you're rich, aren't you? You're a movie star, you must be rich. It's like, you don't understand. No, I have 44% taxes taken out. I've got an agent that's 10%. I've got, you know, a trust fund that's 25%. I don't get anything. People say, oh, you know, yeah, oh, they're just lucky. That's why they got the job. But they're talented. That's why they got the job. But they're beautiful. That's why they got the job. I basically think it's who you know. I really honestly think it's who you know. You can be a wonderful actress and not work for, you know, years and years. It doesn't, I don't think that really matters. It, it'll come down to the look or, it, you know, it could come down to acting. I think acting is on the bottom of the list, basically. Since I've been in this business since I was four or five years old, I feel like I have grown up too fast, really. I miss out on going to high school. I haven't been in a high school since ninth grade. I'm already a senior, miss out on all that stuff. I've always wanted to be a cheerleader. You know, where now it's because I didn't have that. I like, I go, I want to go to the prom. I want to be a cheerleader. I want to be on the yearbook committee. I want to do all these things that I didn't get a chance to do. That's the last time I worked. <laughs> it's been pretty dead. After Boy Meets World, that was in November, um, Christmas time got really, really slow. Always around Christmas time, the holidays, business gets slow. Maybe the reason I haven't worked in a while is because saving up for that really good thing, you know? <laughs> oh, please. So uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. like 5,000 other actors in this world. I'm still auditioning and I'm still trying to get it at my break. It just depends on uh, what's going on, what's out there, you know, and not working is definitely part of being an actress. I started with beauty pageants, which I wanted to do when I was younger. And I guess I was like, you know, four or five years old. She's done over 300 of them. My very first acting experience was on so well. People think Hollywood is so easy, you know, to all of a sudden just, you come into the business and you become a celebrity. You work on one thing and you become a movie star. They don't realize that I've been doing this 12 years and it takes that long and I'm still not anywhere near where I'd like to be. Being the mother of a young actress is very difficult. Um, you have to be able to devote 24 hours a day of your life to her. Hang on, Nick. What time am I at tomorrow? I don't know. You know what I'm talking You know what I'm talking about? The one you took? Yes. Yeah. Did you take the appointment? I'll have to check my schedule. It has its ups and downs, but it has its rewards. And I'm very glad she did it. Do you want me to hold that down here? Yeah, I'll just it up the next time. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I could model for you sometime if you want. Hey, Brad, my father buy tickets to the finals. My mom has been everything but a stage mom. You would think from meeting her that she would be, but she surprised me, really. She really has. She stayed behind, she stayed in the trailer, she's not come out. The only time she ever says anything to anybody is when I come to her and say, Mom, I got a problem. We have a strange relationship. Everybody tells us that. You know, everyone's like, you know, it's cool. You have a really weird relationship. So, you know, it's like your best friend. You, you go out to lunch almost every day together, you know, and you hang out together at night, watch TV, you know. It's like a typical 17-year-old girl doesn't want her mother around at all. See, I have to drop off some contracts. Mom, I have to mail them. No, I got the address to drop them off. You have to drop them off. A lot of parents say that, you know, oh, yeah, you push her because, you know, she supports you and, she, you know, she brings home the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Yes, she does. But she wanted to move out here. She wanted to be in Hollywood. She wanted to do acting. Um, can, can you move my car because I didn't take your car? I don't have any resumes. I never got them. I can't hold down a full-time job. Be a mom, you know, be an acting coach, um, be an agent, be a manager, be everything for her that she needs me to be. Hey, Mom. Can you do me a favor? Can you look up in um, the LA Weekly or, or, the, or the newspaper and see if there's a play called Pot Mom playing tonight at an 8 o'clock show? 
And if there is, can you, uh, you don't have a credit card or anything, but can you like, I don't know, figure out, ask them if you can see that it's really getting bad at I will. Can you give me the reason I've devoted 12 years now to her. I have given up everything um, to make her succeed. My first modeling job, I ended up taking all these clothes home. I would love to have done a lot she's done, you know, but I didn't have that opportunity. I didn't have parents that could devote all their time to doing it. And it is a 24-hour a day, seven-day job. Um, your agent just called you. What'd you say? Moose is still out of town. When he gets back, he'll go in. The other girls are going in on a different level. Oh, Danielle doesn't feel I gave up anything. Okay. She feels this is all part of being a mom. I, I gave up nothing. You asked my daughter that question. Um, do you feel your mother gave up anything um, to better you? She's going to say no. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Are we going to go to the mall right now? Yeah. Let's go right now. Come on. Daddy. See what I'm doing? I'm paying bills. Going to Danielle's paperwork. I'm a personal assistant to Danielle. Personal assistant? That's my title I've given myself. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. I told you I gave it to myself last week. Personal assistant. Meaning? Okay, wait a minute. Who goes and picks up your scripts, runs lines with you, cooks for you, shut up, cleans for you, mother, even mother. takes your car to the car wash for my you mother. when you have to, picks up your dry cleaning, my takes mother. dry cleaning. My okay. mother. Okay, so what do I... My mother, not my assistant. But I do everything that an assistant would do. You do everything that a mother would do. I get paid for it, though. Please. <laughs> so, I'm an assistant. I was really annoyed by the fact that my mom used the term personal assistant because I think that she thinks that because she picks up a script for me or she takes me to an audition if my car is broke down or, or she makes a business phone call for me, that she should be an assistant. That's not my job. She's 17. She drives. That's her responsibility. But I, I try to explain to her that there's millions of other teenage or kid actors and actresses that their parents do this for them. I mean, I don't have to do these things, but I do them because I love her. She's my daughter. She's taken very good care of me the last six, seven years since she's, you know, since we lived in New York before I got divorced. I left my husband in New York and moved out here with my kids, not knowing a soul out here, you know, and started a life. Hopefully, he was supposed to come and... I waited and waited and waited and just never showed up. It's hard being a single mom, but um, I love Danielle, and Danielle has taken very good care of me. Danielle has gotten me anything I've ever wanted. I wish I could give her everything that she's wanted, but I mean, everything around here, the home, the cars, everything, it's all Danielle. It's all because of Danielle. She's very insecure about her career right now because um, nine months went by without a job. Those times are really hard for anybody, and everybody goes through it. I did two other Halloween movies, Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. They're making another one, Halloween 6, and I would be playing the same character. I would be playing Jamie, who I've developed and created this girl. I have to get the part in Halloween because it's, just, it's me. I can't let somebody else go up there and, and whether they do a good job or not a good job, I can't let somebody replace me. It's my movie. It's like, you know, it's, I was the little girl. Like, I get recognized from, from those Halloween movies. She's going to be very upset. You're going to be a very, very hurt child. I'm, like, the head of the household. I pay most of the bills and stuff like that. And I, I need to get a job, you know, to, to support everybody and, and, you know, that kind of thing, at least for now. I need to keep working. I love it. I love acting. It's, it's a part of me. When I don't do it, I go through like little breakdowns. I need to keep working. I'm waiting to have him be the executive producer. Like he doesn't know me. <laughs> I did two movies for him, and he still wants to have a meeting with me, I guess.
The last thing that the agent told me about Halloween 6 was we were waiting for the executive producer to come back into town. My agent just basically said, lay low and that'll happen soon. I see no reason why they're not going to give it to her. They better come up with a good reason if she doesn't get it. I have to get the part in Halloween. I'm very overprotective of that character. I mean, she created the character. Me. Tell, tell character. I, I can't bear to sit down and think that I'll be sitting, I'll be sitting in the movie theater and watch some other girl do a part that I created because those Halloween movies basically started me off in my career. I really need to get things rolling because I'm kind of like I need to get, I need to get it, and like, at that uncomfortable stage where you don't know if you're going to do it or not. like the head of the household i pay most of the bills and stuff like that and i i need to get a job you know to, to support everybody and, and you know that kind of thing at least for now it would get really hard and um it was just i would be going in an audition and the need of wanting and, and needing to get a job would be all over my face i'd go in there and try so hard to get a job i before i go before i go into an audition i'd go i need to get this job i have to get this job go in there i gotta do good i gotta get this and I'd go in there, and all that would be going through my mind, and I would do a really bad job. If she doesn't get a job, she shrugs it off the shoulders. Me? Uh-uh. I take everything personally. Why, 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 why? What did you do wrong? What did they like? What did they like? I can't be, like, I can't be paranoid. I can't, I can't be so stressed out all the time like she is. She stresses more than I do, and she rubs off on me, and I start to freak out about things. Stress. Um, stress comes with part of being in the business. I think stress is my middle name, actually. You're always stressed out because this business is very stressful. My mom is like, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell her that I want to move out. I've talked about it a lot before, but if you have my mom, you'd understand it's not a good thing to talk about. She just, it has to be like this, you know what I mean? And she just, she won't let me go. She won't let me go. You're moving again? No, no, she's not. She told you that just now. You know, my mom is my mom. She's very unique, and there's no one in the world quite like her. She don't listen to Dan now. She doesn't She's all talk. She can't do her own laundry. She can't cook her own meals. She can't clean up that herself. She's driving me crazy. She's a spoiled little girl. And she's so thick-headed, and I'm just so open-minded that we clash. We'll see what happens. She ain't going anywhere, baby. The deal was, I you stay home another day. year. Deal, not another year. I said, I'm not in my car, I'm not going to move out when I turn 18. Unless I get a job. And then I want to have some money and move out. And what am I going to do? Go live in the street? <laughs> you want to tell you to <laughs> <laughs> No, yes, it's you. will get an apartment. And I'll no, I won't. No, I won't. I'll live in the house. You go live in your apartment. <laughs> yeah, fine. I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> Six, my mom is not going to come with me. It's a good script. Six, it's a very good script. We start production in, what, a week and a half? She's really looking forward to doing it. You know, and it's, it's like I haven't had a, a definite yes. All we don't have it's just a matter of when. I haven't had a, any contracts, even a deal memo come through. I tried to call the, the producer. I tried to get her to myself. Now, I don't understand what the whole home is. I feel great if I get the part. They're supposed to start this on the 15th of this month. Um, that's next week. Hope you'll we'll have the meeting with them. Um, only two more days left this week. We're having her tomorrow and the next day, hopefully. What do you want to do with Halloween? Everybody keeps yeah. asking me. Is it for the money or because you no, created it's all the role that you created? Because it's a girl I created and because it's money and because it's, I feel like it's I gotta grow up sometime. I'm not saying you don't have to grow up, but, you know, it just scares me that you're, you're leaving. Why? Because I don't be around a lot more than you think, I think. Who am I going to sit and talk to? Who, who am I going to tell all my friends? These, they know, like, best friends, not mother and daughter, basically. But, you know, who am I going to tell everything to? We talk about everything. And the reason why it's hard to tell her that I'm, that I'm moving out is because, aside from losing a daughter, she's losing a best friend, she's losing, um, uh, God. She's, I'm, I'm the reason why she's out here in California. It's, it was because of me all these years. And now that I'm going to move away and she's not going to have anything to do, it's, it's just hard. It, it hurts that I'm not needed as much as I was. She doesn't want to accept the fact that I'm growing up, that I'm getting old, and I'm, I'm moving out. Danielle Harris! <laughs> if I get a series, I told you. I'm afraid if I get a show or a movie and make money, I she's going to 
buy me this house. She's buying this house to me. And she's going to go get her own little apartment. <laughs> Halloween 6 called my house. Talking about doing the film session. Okay, whatever, you know, no problem. It's, oh, we'll see you here. This is the date that you're going to be starting on. And um, then I said, well, call my agent to talk, like, you know, contract, money, and this and that, an airplane, all that, you know, stuff that needs to be taken care of. And uh, they came back with a ridiculous amount of money, and I thought they were joking. So I said, they offered me less money for Halloween 6 than I made in Halloween 5. I said, I'm sorry, but I passed. I'm insulted, and I'm not going to work for that amount of money. If Danielle doesn't get Halloween, then she's going to be very upset. You're going to see a very, very hurt child. Not to be bright or anything, but I'm really, I was really hurt. She's just starting, as far as I'm concerned. She's into a new age bracket, a new era, and um, she's got a long road ahead of her, as far as movies go and TV shows. For everything bad that happens, good happens. That's my philosophy. I've said that to many people. And, and because that was something that I wanted, that didn't turn out the way I wanted, I needed to think it's a matter of me sticking my ground and believing in myself that I could get something better. And it always proves to be right. If I had a caring godmother here right now, and I could have anything I wanted with my career, I would probably want just to do like one really great quality movie. Just a movie that just everybody's gonna remember, you know, and, and have somebody actually sit there in the movie theater and go, oh my God, that girl is amazing. And it, do it and make enough money to support myself forever. And then, you know, okay, it's, I'm dreaming now. And um, be a, have it be a really wonderful part.